All right, balance. That's the focus of today's class. Balance, of course, is not just a physical issue. It's also a mental and emotional issue. And gratefully, yoga addresses uh, both aspects. Um, as I said in my note last night, apparently we begin to falter or at least not be as balanced somewhere between the ages of 40 and 50. Can't verify that, but I think all of us recognize the importance of balance, walking, climbing stairs. Now walking, number one, obviously is a big deal. So we're gonna do some exercises today to work our way up to um, some of the bigger uh, yoga balance postures. Um, but suffice to say that these postures that we practice help us develop concentration. They actually bring more calm into our body. So balance, you know, if you're just standing around waiting for your coffee or your oatmeal to cook, consider balancing in your kitchen. Lots of things I'm sure to grab onto if you falter. Um, strengthens core, strengthens muscles. And because sometimes we're balancing on one leg or the other, um, if there's a weakness on one side of the body, so if you have a weakness on the right side of your body, you should focus on using the right leg for balancing perhaps more than the left. Um, not a lot more because you don't want to be out of balance, but if you want to strengthen a part of your body, then you got to use it. So I'm just assuming for a moment, and I hope that you're sitting down and that you have something underneath your butt. If you're not, please take a position of sitting. If sitting cross-legged doesn't work for you, then find your chair that you sit in with a straight back, with a hard seat, feet flat on the floor and close your eyes. Because whatever's going on in the mind will filter and be reflected in the body. So as you sit tall, with your eyes closed, separate the biting surfaces of your teeth and just follow your breathing. And as you're sitting, it's pretty easy to let that Buddha belly expand. And as you exhale, you can use the muscles of your core to draw your belly back in and squeeze all of the stale air out. So just do <clears throat> five breaths on your own here. Breathing in, letting your belly be a Buddha. So really let your belly out. Then on an exhale, you might consciously use your abdomen to pull your belly back in towards your lower spine. Be sure that your back is tall, long. Feel the strength that it takes to sit up straight. Now, the more you do this, the less muscles you'll have to use, or at least feel that you're using. Our core has become weak from slouching, sitting in chairs, driving in cars where our lumbar is not supported. In my opinion, the lumbar, the lower part of your back, back of your waist, this is the singular most important area of your body, of your back to focus on. Once your lumbar is concave, so it curves inwards, once that does that, your sternum lifts, your shoulders relax, and you breathe better. So I don't sit very long anywhere without either just using the muscles of my back or using a lumbar cushion to support my back. 
So let's take one more deep breath in. And exhale everything out. You can even make a sound. <sighs> now, I know for some of you, you might feel a little squirrely trying to sit still. Just notice that, okay? You can call yourself a squirrel if you want. Okay, come on over onto all fours. Place your hands underneath your shoulders. Place your knees underneath your hips. Lengthen your spine from tailbone right to the crown of your head. Make sure your neck is aligned with your spine and moves with your spine. Look down at your hands. Your middle finger points forward. You can curl your toes under if you like. It's a nice stretch for the toes and a stretch for the plantar fascia. On an exhale, round your spine. Pull your belly in, drop your chin. On an inhale, hollow out your lower back. Coming into cow pose, lifting your tail, lengthening through your neck. Don't crank your head too much. Exhale, round your spine, pull your bellies in, drop your tailbone, tuck your chin. Inhale, hollow out your lower back, lift your tail, lengthen through your neck. One more round. Exhale into cat. This should feel good on your lower back. And inhale, hollow out your lower back. And let's come into neutral. And now uncurl your toes and flatten the tops of your feet. Bring your knees slightly in towards one another. Extend your right leg straight out behind you. You can point the foot or flex, doesn't matter, but do one or the other. Extend the other opposite arm out in front. So feel your core working here. Of course, your arms and your shoulders, your legs, all the muscles in the back of your body are working. Make sure your neck is in line with your spine. Don't let it hang and don't crank it up. Align your neck with your spine. Really extend and reach through the heel or reach through the toes, whether you're pointing or flexing. If you wanna point and then flex, just to take your mind off things for a moment, Go for it. And one more inhale, reach and stretch. Exhale, draw the knee and the arm back down. Now lift that right arm up, reach up, stretch up and look up. Exhale, thread the needle. Come on over onto your left shoulder, left side of your face and tippy toe the fingers of your right hand straight out in front. Breathing into your lower back, expanding through your rib cage and your intercostal muscles, lengthening your spine, draw the right hand back, pressing up. And now let's extend the left leg straight out behind you and the right arm straight out in front of you, reaching stretching, balancing. So again, if you want to point the foot and then flex it, go for that or just hold one or the other. Reaching and stretching, you're activating, firing up your core, which is important for balance. Awareness and presence also really important. And I notice, and I don't know if it's footwear or what it is, but a lot of people shuffle their feet. They don't pick them up. Now that's not good. Um, so be willing to, you know, lift your feet enough so you're not shuffling, so you're not going to trip. And owning good shoes is worth the price. One more inhale, reach and stretch, exhale, release and bring your hand and knee back down. And now lift that right arm up, reaching up, stretching up, exhale. Thread it under, bring your shoulder and the side of your face down onto the floor, your bum pokes up in the air, tippy toe the fingers of the left hand and breathe into your lower back. Big breath in 
and big release out. So a study published in uh, the British Medical Journal suggested that exercise was equal to the top three medications in terms of efficacy. And I, I, I'm telling you that just because I know it's easy to take a pill and sometimes we don't feel like exercising, but the positive benefits of, of moving your body far outweigh any medication. Now, the only exception was water pills. They said no water pills, uh, yoga didn't help with that. But um, draw your left hand back, reach up, and then let's come into our modified child's pose. Bring your toes together, knees are as wide as your mat. Take your bum back towards your heels. Tops of your feet should be flat on the floor here. Of course, if you have knee issues, you're keeping your knees underneath your hips and you're coming into puppy pose. So forehead is on the floor, bum is in the air, or you're in your modified child's pose if you're not having any knee issues. Tops of your feet are flat, your bum is back by your heels, and you're releasing your torso between your thighs. So this is flushing waist out in the joints of the ankle, the knees, the hips. And this pressure on the center of the forehead actually stimulates the pineal gland to release melatonin. And inhale. Okay, bring the knees, if they're not already, underneath your hips. Let's step the right leg forward, curl the toes under the back leg, reach the arms out in front, and then lift your back knee off the floor and keep reaching the arms straight out in front. So you're in a low lunge. Good deep inhaling and exhaling. Keep stretching with your arms forward and then bring the knee to the floor. Bring your hands to the floor. Let's lift the left arm up, twisting, turning, reaching up. And let's lift that back knee off the floor once again. And release the knee down. Bring your left hand to the floor and let's twist and bring your right arm up. So you're twisting over to the right side in a low lunge. And bring that hand back to the outside of your front foot and let's step back into our first downward facing dog. And walk your dog nice and slow. Warming up the hips, stretching. And come on down onto your knees and step your left foot forward. Curl the toes under of the right foot. Inhale, lift the knee off the floor and reach the arms forward. So part of what we need for balance is strength, especially in the legs and the hips. We don't typically fall over when we're standing still. It's when we're transitioning. So yoga is perfect for developing what we need. Strength, flexibility, warming up the muscles, developing presence and awareness, calm, focus, concentration, and then bring your hands to the floor, drop your knee to the mat, Bring your hands, both of them, inside of your left leg. You're going to sweep the right arm up first. So your toes of your back leg are still curled under. You can lift your back knee off the floor, reaching up, stretching up. And bring the back knee down. And now let's twist. We're going to take the left arm up, low lunge, twisting, 
twisting, but no shouting. I just thought of that Beatles song, Twist and Shout. Hmm. Excellent. And bring that left hand down. Step back once again into your downward facing dog. And let's come up into a three legged dog. Make sure all 10 fingers are pressing into the floor. Can you take your leg out to the side? You can feel your core working. Take the leg back and up. Bring the knee into the center of the body, coming into a low plank. Take that leg back. So the right leg is back up in the air, your three-legged dog. Tip it over to the left side. Look under your left armpit. See if you can see your foot, pied, en France. And take it back. Okay, and then bring that foot between your hands, rotate, pivot on the back foot. We're going to come up into warrior two. Reaching with your arms front and back. And then lower the back arm down the back leg, reaching straight up, looking up. And windmill your arms back into downward facing dog. Walk your dog. Lift your left leg up in the air. Now, be sure you're pressing your right toe mount into the floor. Pressing the heel towards the floor. That gives you a nice stretch in the back of your legs. Take the leg out to the side, left side. And take it back up and behind and then tip it over to the right. Look under your right armpit. Have a look. Hi, foot. How are you? And then take your leg back up behind you. Look forward. And bring that foot as far forward as you can. Pivot on your back foot. Windmill the arms. Come on up into warrior two, other side. All of this requiring balance. And lower your back arm down your back leg. Reaching up with your top arm. And then coming back into warrior two, bring your legs together and give your legs a little shake out. Okay, we're gonna do a little exercise. We're gonna try walking heel to toe. Okay, so come on up, actually start at the back of your mat because we're gonna go in both directions. And you're literally gonna bring your heel to your toe, literally, okay? So take a step, make sure the heel of your front foot feels the toes of your back foot. It's kind of like feeling like a tightrope walker. I see that Cirque du Soleil is coming back to Toronto. So literally, now this is just, it's an exercise for balance, pure and simple. Unless you are thinking about running away and joining the circus, then it's prep. Okay, so really slowly, this can also be a walking meditation. Okay, so once you're at the top of your mat, I want you to reverse the direction. Be sure your toes touch your heels, which may be revealing what I'm noticing is that I need to cut my, some of my toenails. I was aware of it, just didn't get to it. Now, balance, of course, can be an issue with an inner ear problem. Also, B12, if we're low in B12, that affects, it 
has something to do with neurotransmitters that can also affect our balance, our focus and concentration. Now, so let's do this, keep going. Head up to the front of your mat again, slowly, one foot in front of the other. B12, you really don't need to take a supplement for B12 because it's widely available in our diets, um, in animal products, so meat, dairy, salmon, liver. Uh, if you happen to be vegan, fortified cereals, it's in a lot of food. So unless somebody says, hey, you really got to take a supplement, but it can affect your balance if you're not eating a decent diet. A little bit of brain fog. B vitamins are great too if you happen to be a stress bucket. Okay, head back. Make sure your feet are touching one another as you step. Okay. All righty. I hope you weren't holding your breath. Come on down onto your backs. We're going to do a little bit of butt and belly strengthening. But first of all, draw your knees up in towards your chest. Do a little rocking and rolling on your lower back. One hand on each knee. It's like a self massage. Keep your knees bent and place your feet flat on the floor. Bring your arms beside your body. Lift your shoulder blades up, tuck them under your heart. Tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. Your arms are by your side. Your palms are facing down and you're reaching your fingertips towards your heels. Press the small of your back into the floor. Peel your spine off the floor, lifting up. So strengthening the legs. And we're really gonna go for it here by lifting the right leg off the floor. So you are now working your left hip, glute, thigh. Breathe, your right leg is just straight out in front. Or maybe you can lift it so it points up towards the ceiling. Bring it back to a 45 degree angle. One more time up to the ceiling. Back to your 45 degree angle. And then bend the leg, place that sole of the foot on the floor. And let's lift the left leg up 45. So notice one side stronger than the other. Point the left foot up towards the ceiling. So the leg is perpendicular now to the floor. Bring it back to 45 degrees. And back to pointing up towards the ceiling. Back to 45 and bend the leg, place the sole of the foot on the floor. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, lower your spine back down onto the floor. Draw your knees up into your chest, one hand on each. A little rocking from side to side. And place the soles of the feet flat on the floor again with your knees bent. Arms beside your body, palms are facing down. The heels should be lining up with your sits bones, your ischial tuberosities. Okay, let's do this one more time. Tilt your pelvis up, press the small of your back into the floor, peel your spine off the floor, and let's bring arms underneath the body and then rock from side to side. So you're interlocking your fingers so that your knuckles are pointing towards your heels. This is important. And then when you walk from side to side, you're actually bringing your shoulder blades together so that they're almost kissing. Now, if your arms are not flat on the floor, um, you can stay here, but I don't want you to lower your arms or your body, your torso onto your arms. So you have a choice. You can either stay suspended here and work your thighs, 
or if your arms are not flat on the floor, release them and just leave them to the side of your body. So if arms are flat on the floor and your, or your arms are out to the side of your body, lower your torso down onto your arms. Whichever one you're doing, you're opening up the front of your body. Inhale, lift the body up again, the torso, pressing up as high as you can. Exhale, lower your torso onto your arms. Inhale, pressing up. Exhale, last time lowering down on top of your arms. Inhale, lifting up. And release your hands and then starting from the top of your vertebra, slowly come on down one at a time. And draw the knees once again up into the chest. Take the arms out to the side shoulder height, knees. Ankles, thighs are glued together. Exhale, both knees over to the left. Keep your knees together. Turn your head to the right slowly. Go very slowly. So this releases tension in the lower back, also strengthens the obliques. Only if you're going slowly. If you go quickly, you don't get the benefits. But just hang out here. And then inhale, slowly bring them back to center. Feel your lower abdominal muscles engaging. And then exhale, both knees over to the right, head to the left. So where you get to really feel your core engaging is when you work against gravity. Inhale, bring the knees back to center. And actually, balance is working with gravity. Knees are slowly coming back to center. If you go real slow, you feel your lower abs engaging. They are important for balance. Exhale, both knees one more time. Over to the left, head to the right. So notice a little more mobility in your lower back as your knees are a little bit closer to the floor. Keep them together, probably noticing a nice stretch through the right armpit. Pectoral muscles, the chest muscles. Inhale, come back to center. Slowly, really slow. Maybe I shouldn't even be at the center until about now. Exhale, last time, both knees over to the right, head to the left. Again, notice you have a little more space in the lower back to let your knees get closer to the floor. And again, notice the stretch through the right, pardon me, the left armpit left pectoral muscles <sighs> inhale come back to center and now this is where my yoga teacher used to say where we separate the wheat from the chaff <laughs> i'm going to just reposition my body a little bit so that i my feet don't wind up on my altar basically we're going to lift the legs straight up in the air why is this a good shot of my butt Hopefully not. All right, interlock your fingers. So your legs are straight up, straight up. You're gonna interlock your fingers behind the back of your neck. You're gonna try and keep your elbows on the floor. You're gonna take both legs over to the left. It's important now to turn your head to the right. Take them halfway. Halfway. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, both legs halfway to the other side. Make sure you turn your head to the opposite side and then bring the legs back to center. I know this can be a little difficult. Take both legs all the way down. 
with as much control as you can. You're taking them all the way down to the floor, all the way down. Try to keep your legs together. Inhale, bring them back up to center. Did I hear some grunts and groans? <laughs> That's okay. Go for it. Both legs over to the other side, slowly, as slow as possible. <sighs> Inhale. I think you're probably doing better than I suspect. Bring back to center. One more time. Take them over to the left side. Head to the right. Try to keep your legs, your feet together. Inhale. Back to center. And exhale. We're going to have a nice release for the lower back after this. Over to the right. And back up to center. Excellent. Bend your knees. Bring your arms inside of your legs. You're going to take hold of your insteps. We're going to attempt to have the ankles straight over the knees. Let me go sideways again so my butt doesn't become the feature. Uh, and then have your knees outside of your torso. Okay, knees should be outside of your rib cage, but just outside. And you're pulling down. So nice release for the lower back. Excellent compression for your ascending, descending colon. <sighs> and you're pulling down on your instep. So your nice, safe stretch for those hamstrings. <sighs> okay, lovely. We're going to do our pigeon pose on our backs because I want to loosen up our hips for some of the movements that we will be uh, working on to strengthen the hips and the legs. Place your right ankle on top of your left knee. Right ankle on left knee. And then press that right knee a little bit away from you. Not gonna go too far. Just do what you can. And then bring the left knee towards you Thread your right arm through your legs. Your left hand meets the right, either behind the back of the left thigh, knee, or if you can keep your shoulder blades on the floor, then interlock your fingers around the front of your left knee. But that's only if you can keep your shoulder blades on the floor. It's okay if your shoulders are off the floor because you are flexing them, rounding them, and then breathe into that right hip. This is truly one of the best postures to practice to release tension in the hip, which I have referred to as the junk drawer the place where we stuff things that we don't want to deal with, don't know how to deal with, don't have time to deal with, and then we forget about it and then wonder why our hips are out of sorts. So just know that by practicing this, you're releasing some of that junk. And the other thing too is you're making space for the fattest nerve in your body, your sciatica. So breathe into it. You, I hope you're noticing how it's releasing a little bit, maybe a lot, or maybe not at all, but just notice. Now, can you press your tailbone towards the floor? That just gets into the hip a little bit more, pressing your tailbone into the floor. So whatever you thought you had released, you're going, wait a minute. A lot more stuff in there. Just breathe into it. Exhale, let it go. And then 
Even the thought of lifting the small of your back off the floor intensifies the stretch, maybe too much for you. Check it out. Don't do too much. But don't do too little either. It's called balance. Finding the middle way. Okay. Now, cross that right leg over your left real tight. Take your arms out to the side and drop both knees over to the left and turn your head to the right. Inhaling, come back to center. Uncross your right leg and place your left ankle on top of your right knee. And then with your left hand, push your left knee away from you. And then lifting the right knee, bring it towards you. Interlock your fingers behind the back of your right knee. Start here. You might be tighter or looser on this side. If you feel you can, take your fingers around to the front of the knee, go ahead. There are no prizes for being able to do this. In fact, when we do something that the body's not ready for, you get the opposite of a prize. You get a little bit of punishment from your body saying, you made me do something that I really wasn't ready for. And I want to let you know. Don't go there. Back it up. You can do a little rocking here if you like, from side to side. But breathe into your left hip and thigh. Tilt your chin towards the center of your chest to lengthen the back of your neck. If your head is off the floor, I should have mentioned this earlier, then I hope you have a cushion nearby that you could place underneath your head. Okay, now press your tailbone towards the floor, intensifying the release of whatever stressors and tension are in that junk drawer on the left side. Let it go. And then lifting the small of your back, even just the thought of it. Check in with yourself too right now. You may be rolling over towards the left side. Try to come back to the center. Again, lengthening the back of your neck. Breathing into your left hip and your left thigh. Letting go. Okay, release your hands. Take them out to the side, shoulder height. Cross that left leg over the right and then slowly drop both knees over to the right side, head to the left. Come back to center, uncross the legs, extend the legs straight out in front, and bring your arms beside your body. Turn your palms up. Bring your heels together. Let your feet splay out. And just take a moment here. Tuck your shoulders underneath your heart center. Tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. And let everything be soft and heavy just for a moment. We're going to move into some pretty demanding poses. So take this these few seconds to gather your energy and strength. Okay. 
By the way, the testing that I mentioned earlier from the British Medical Journal that indicated that exercise was as effective as the top three medications being used. It was a double blind um, test, the gold standard of testing, and they tested it on 340,000 people. So it's significant. And it just reminds us that exercise is necessary. It's important and it can be better than or as good as some of the top medications that are just making those pharmaceutical companies a little too rich for my blood. Okay, draw your knees in towards uh, your chest, bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs, and if you're able, rock up to a seated position. If that doesn't feel right, roll over onto your side and use your top arm to press yourself up. And I say that because when I hurt my back, I could not do that. So. Hmm. Navasana, boat pose. Okay, we know this one really strengthens the core, strengthens the legs, develops tatiksha, the ability to handle hardship. <clears throat> All right, so knees are bent, place your hands underneath the backs of your legs, rock back, find that sweet spot to balance, and just hold your legs. Lift your gaze up towards the ceiling or at least up the wall. Fire up your abs by pulling them in. Shoulders down, released. Release one hand, release the other hand. If you can't hold as long as I'm asking you to, then come out of it when you need to. One more breath in and come on all the way down and rock back one hand on each knee rocking from side to side you know the more you practice these difficult positions they really do get easier and you don't have to be a fanatic i never have been a fanatic about this i am about the study portion just because it's um something that I feel is just so important and beneficial to my psyche. But this, of course, developing the physical. So finding that comfortable spot, holding the backs of your legs, this time straighten your legs, but if you're holding them, you're holding them. So you're getting the idea. Fire up your abs. Shoulders back, eyes are either up the wall or looking at the ceiling. Release one hand, take it back, release the other hand, put it back, release both hands. Look, Ma, no hands. <sighs> Breathe. You're feeling this in your quads, you're feeling it in your abs and come on all the way down okay wow let's make big circles on our back here extend your right leg or left leg straight out in front your right knee remains bent bring it into your chest with your left hand on the outside bring that right knee over to the left side take your right arm out to the other side just stretching out the hip Tech guy's tapping. Are you sending out a Morse code? <laughs> okay, feel a good stretch. If you're not feeling a good stretch through the right hip, draw that knee a little higher up. Breathe into it. Come on back to center. Draw the left knee up, extend the right leg down in front with your right hand on the outside of your left knee. Take it across your body. Extend your left arm out to the left side. Remember, you have the choice of intensifying this stretch by drawing the knee higher up towards the shoulder 
or just keeping it perpendicular to your body. But wherever you're feeling the tightness, breathe into it. If we did this very quickly, the body does not have time to let go and release. You've got to hold positions to release tension and stress from the body. You also need to hold them to develop the strength that we need to maintain good balance. Alrighty. Draw that knee back to center. Bring the other knee up into the center. And again, we're gonna come up, rock up to seated, or you're gonna roll over onto your side and use your top arm to push yourself up. Come on up. Come on over onto your knees. Curl your toes under. Let your head hang and slowly roll up. One vertebra at a time, keep your chin tucked into your chest until you're all the way up. Okay, so we're going to do a transition of Tadasana to Utkatasana to Vrikshasana. But before we do that, let's just practice an easy balance. So come on, I'll do the mirror image for you. You're gonna balance on your right leg and you're gonna lift your left knee up. So focus your gaze. You'll notice some quivering in the standing leg. Please keep the knee of the standing leg soft. So don't lock it, keep it soft and take that foot down. Let's balance on the other leg, on the left leg, lifting the opposite leg up. So this is more about strengthening the standing leg than bending the leg. So all the little tremors in the standing leg, that's how the body works to balance. That's what it's doing. You're balancing against gravity. Alrighty, take that leg down. Let's once again balance on the right leg. This time we're gonna take the left knee out to the side. And you place your arms wherever you like that you feel might help. And place it back down. And then let's do the other side. Looking like a beautiful day. You'll be ready to get out and play or get back to the gardening you may have started before the snow. I'll tell you all the moisture we've had, you gotta get out because all the little things are just shooting up out of the earth. They've all had a big drink. Okay, release, ah, give your legs a good shake out. Now, if you have slippery pants, pulling off um, a tree pose with your leg up here, it's very difficult. And remember when we do tree pose, we press the foot into the thigh, we press the thigh into the foot, and we don't press on the knee. So we can always do the kickstand version. This applies also to eagle, because we're going to do that as well. But let's start in Tadasana. So when you lift your toes off the floor, you can feel your big toe mount planting. You know, I was thinking about Easter weekend, you know, if you're standing around chatting to people, and some of us didn't do anything on Easter weekend. We just hung out with ourselves. That was me. Um, well, not entirely true, but. <laughs> but you know what? Consider Tadasana as your standing posture all the time. Most people don't know that they're probably two or three inches taller when they stand up straight. So engage your thighs. 
lift up at your sternum, shoulders down, reach up through the crown of your head. I may have just grown an inch. It's just remarkable and dramatic for people who are hunched over, forward, oh, I'm not on my phone, what's going on with crypto? Not much going on with crypto, that's what's going on. Okay, so there's your Tadasana. Now, bend your knees as if you were about to sit in a chair, raise your arms up. They can be shoulder height, they can be even higher. What you want is you want to try and get your knees over your ankles, but that's, you know, really pressing back. Do you want to be able to see your toes in front of your knees? But Katasana, horseman's pose, developing balance and strength, but we're going to move into more balance in a moment. So we're staying in each posture about five breaths. Okay, come on back. Balancing on your right leg, draw the left up, bring it either, now it can be below the knee, can be in the kickstand position, below the knee or above, bringing the heel inside your groin, and if your pants are slippery, you can hang on to your ankle. Bring your hands into prayer. Focus your gaze or open your branches. My foot seems like it wants to slip, but maybe we can keep it there. Hmm. Back down and lower that leg and give it a shake out. And do the other side now. So once again, starting in your perfect posture, lifting up at your sternum, engage your thighs, feel your toe mounds pressing into the floor, then lower your toes, reaching up through the crown. Shoulders, of course, are back and down. And breathe. It should feel opening, it should feel refreshing. Know that when we're in a good alignment, the body has a better opportunity of taking in and letting go, of digesting, whether it's food, emotions, ideas. Okay, but Katasana, chair pose or horseman's pose. So look down, see your toes in front. The weight is in your heels. Your fingers are active, reaching, stretching. One more breath here. And release the arms down and balancing on the left leg. Draw the right foot up. Pressing the foot either into the inner thigh the calf, or perhaps you're using it as a kickstand. No matter which, you are balancing. Open your branches. I feel that my foot's going to slide, so I'm hanging on to it. One more breath here. And release and give the legs a good shake out. And the lower back. Okay, eagle pose. Big, big balance pose, but great for the joints. Um, you know, to get that synovial fluid into your major joints is working all of them. But again, with Eagle Pose, we can do the kickstand. Okay, so there's your kickstand. But let's begin by raising the arms out to the side. 
Swing them around the back. This I find really important. A lot of people don't do this first. So if you can, you're grabbing your uh, shoulder blades. This just helps to get your elbows much closer together. And I don't know if it produces any oxytocin by hugging yourself, but probably. Did I get the right word, oxytocin? Yes, that's the one, because it's so <laughs> close to that a nasty little drug. Okay, all right, so you are going to bend a lot, no matter where your legs end up, bend a lot, all right? Bend, 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 bend. Release your arms, either the hands are back towards one another, or you're bringing palms inside. Okay, with your, now, with your right arm under your left, that means your right leg is gonna go over your left. So whichever arm is on the bottom, that same leg will go on top. Okay, so focus, focus, focus. Come up onto the ball of the right foot. You're gonna lift that up and over. And you're trying to wrap the foot around. May not go, mine's not going yet. But the more you bend, focus your gaze eight or nine feet in front of you. Focus on something, not moving. You're concentrating. You're developing strength. So you need to bend a lot. And releasing, slowly release the arms, take them out to the side. This time bring the left under the right reach all the way around your back if you can grabbing your shoulder blades this time we're going to balance on the right foot because the left arm is under the right so the left leg is going to go on top of the right okay so release the arms again something's going on in one of my shoulders so i'm just bringing my palms together i'm going to bend a lot and take your time, wait for your own inner cue for balance, and don't get bummed out if you fall out. Some days balances just don't happen. Lifting the left leg up. You've got to bend the standing leg a lot. All my stabilizing muscles, as are yours, working hard with the force of gravity. And come on out, sweep the arms up, exhale, forward fold, come halfway up, exhale, folding down, Let's step the left leg forward, right leg back, bend that front. Actually, let's start with the right knee on the floor and left leg bent. It's easier. Bring your right arm to the outside of your left knee. Bring your hands together in sideways prayer and then lift that back leg off the floor. Turning, twisting releasing tension from your lower back. But of course, another beautiful balanced posture, focusing your gaze. I'll bet this class took so much focus for you, you didn't notice any of the housekeeping that needs to be done. I'm just guessing, don't really wanna take your mind off things, but <laughs> notice when you're focused and balance requires and develops focus. Okay, hands to the floor, step back into your downward facing dog. I'm gonna change to the other side here. Okay, let's step left leg back. So right knees in front, bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee, bring the other hand on top, sideways prayer, curl the back toes under, lift the back knee off the floor. You're turning and twisting. 
Lots of good stuff here. The twist on the torso, of course, is cleansing. This is a great time of year if you're thinking about cleaning up your diet. Start in the spring, we eat lighter. We start to feel lighter. We shed our heavy clothes, heavy boots. And release. Coming into another dog. Walk your dog. And then bring your left foot forward. Turn sideways on your mat. Tent your fingers beneath your face. Tabletop your spine. Inhale. Sweep the left arm up. Reach up. Stretch up. Look up. Exhale. Float it down. Inhale, sweep the other arm up. Feel the stretch in your inner thigh. Exhale, float it down. Let's lunge over to the left, bringing bum close to heel. Inhale, up and over to the other side. And into the center, walk your feet in and bring yourself flat out and relaxing into Shavasana. Take the time to allow the benefits of what you have performed to be integrated. This is really important. We started a couple minutes late, so you're still just into your hour. I know some of you feel that Shavasana is a waste of time. Trust me, you're not wasting one single moment. In fact, it is probably the most precious and important part of balance, balancing the doing with the being. Balance is key. True nobility is not being better than another. It's being better than you used to be. And I would offer that kindness in its many, many forms. It can be generosity, it can be a compliment, it can be a smile. You can be having eye contact with somebody. It's feeding people. There's so many different ways, taking them flowers, calling them up and saying, hi, we haven't spoken in a long time. I think kindness is noble. So thanks again for spending some time taking care of your body, learning to balance both body and mind. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.